It's a perfect line on high pack. <laughs> You've almost got like a perfect helix, almost like a single DNA strand. <laughs> it does kind of look like that. <laughs> For Singed Sea Star. Yeah, I don't know why. Any of these are not identified beyond uh, Brasinja Day in the um, our animal ID guide for the area. Maybe it's because no one's really bothered to collect them, in part because they're extremely spiny and uh, probably enormous. Um, probably requires a lot of alcohol to preserve them. Or no one's looked in, in depth at them, but most of the time I think for sea stars, before you get a good idea on a taxonomist might want to look at a specimen. This could be Brasinja, Brasinga. But there's some some others that look just like it too that are not well identified. Got a question that just came in. You can't see it right now, um, but someone's wondering about the color panels that we have on the ROV manipulator arm and what the purpose of that is. That sounds like a video Steve question. Yeah, I think that's a video Steve. Sure, yeah. Uh, we have a white piece of tape uh, that's above those colors that we use to white balance the camera. Uh, different Edge, nah. light sources have different color temperatures. For example, an incandescent light bulb is rather orange or warm. We can and keep that move going, but we can go 100 meters bearing 320. More blue or cool. Um, so when we use do something with the camera called white balancing, it, it reads the light that's reflecting back at the camera and we're telling it how to calibrate what white is and then those other pieces of tape the oh, rgb it. just are a good reference for us to look at and make sure everything looks as it should thanks steve can, can you look at the fish yeah. first before. oh yeah, yeah. I, I know did, oh. we did sample that worm already so yeah I was trying to catch the fish before it went away. Fishes are like, I don't know, you, you kind of have to prioritize them over the non-modal things because they tend to scoot. He's taken off. I think it was a halosaur, though. Uh, oh, here we go. I think it wouldn't be too I far I like that out they the have box. sore in their name. Go for Zoom. Oh, he's a, he's a feisty one. <laughs> Halosaur, I think, is um, 
translates to something like salt lizard. But it's not it's not a lizard fish. It's, some, it's his own family. Yeah, not a lizard at all. Nope. Sorry. Not as fast Steve. as one though. He was that was a very fast fish. That fish messed up my perfect zigzags. <laughs> Might be able to salvage him though. I appreciate your, your zigzags a lot. Oh, good. Thank you. Because they're so uniform? Symmetrical? <laughs> I actually thought that was like USBL no. <laughs> errors at first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, yeah, it is very impressive. <laughs> Should we take a screenshot and print it out? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll show Trevor. Put it on the fridge. <laughs> Put it on the ROV door. <laughs> Are you one of those skiers that's like all about the turns? Well, like the the, I turns. don't make those like the big turns. No, <laughs> I like the um, I like the like powdery tree skiing. Oh, so the turns sort of disappear. Mm. Yeah, those are quicker turns. Yeah. I mean, it's very satisfying to carve like beautiful uniform turns and like turn around and look up the slope at them. I do love that. It's it scary in the trees. Yeah. But you yeah, and you can't get those like uniform turns that you look back up slope at in the trees. There's not where I used to do a lot of skiing, there's not a lot of alpine to ski. It's all trees. Are you changing your heading as you're doing each of these iterations, or are you just lateraling? I'm changing my heading. Okay. Steve, can you remind us the name of the carnivorous sponge? So people are wondering yeah, the name I, you said for that. I think it's in the genus Clatteriza. Um, so that's C L A T O R. H I Z A. That Ariza. Thank you. Yep. So, Steve, my feeling on changing the heading is that you actually get to see, if you change the heading and get some downslope in there, yeah. you get to see more stuff. Yeah. There's like a bigger field of view um, where the where the seafloor drops away. Whereas, like, if you keep the same heading, you, you've got a more uniform patch that you're looking at yeah but it's much smaller yeah i i agree okay yeah. I, it's certainly up to you if you would like me to look no, like no no um and also it's um you can drive faster forward yeah no i i agree i think uh maybe like lateraling would work better on a lower slope you know more moderate slope where it's yeah flatter you can see the same thing yeah in, in i think most that's every direction probably true i always you know wondered um you know doing the data analysis on this how how it would be best to treat this type of movement because if you add up so what's what's each of these um what's the length of each of these kind of lateral movements Can we measure that on hypac so it's about uh, maybe 30, 35 uh, yeah. meters wide, but each leg is longer than that. So yeah. like you could like measure them as triangles. Yeah, or yeah, that's, that's the thing, because I was wondering, you know, when you're trying to do calculations of density and area, we cover in a transect, and 
you know, when we do our video analysis, if uh, if we're really under sampling, or let's say it would be yeah, under reporting densities of animals by not taking into account the amount of extra transit by the ROV. Right. Um, because we kind of look at straight line tracks and we assume right. that it's a straight line track. Right. This is um, looking at the slope sideways does not do you any favors as far as estimating density. Yeah, not not the greatest, but um, it's, it, it's one of the hazards of working on seamounts, especially of steep seamounts. So we, we often, as ecologists, will use statistical methods to kind of get, make all those pesky details go away. <laughs> uh, yeah benefits of multivariate statistical ecology you can right. kind of look ever look at everything at the same level without having to really worry too much about the effort if you just make some assumptions but effort is important effort in this case meaning how much time we're spending at a certain depth or how much uh, time or, or distance we're covering at a certain depth Right. But for exploration purposes, I think this is the best thing to do. I think we're covering, what, square root of two more than square root of two times more than we would be if we just went straight. If this is like, you know, a equilateral triangle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is, you know, it's the only assumption I can make to do trig in my, or <laughs> Pythagorean in my, in my head. Like I just don't know what else to do there. If it's a right, if it's That's a right it. triangle, yeah. I right isosceles, I think. I I applaud you for doing that at three a.m. because I don't yeah. have that. <laughs> Pythagorean it's geometry. It's the same part of my brain that is allowing me to draw right isosceles triangles with the ROV at three a.m. <laughs> So are you doing this just by like assuming Argus is consistent and then flying within the box to the edge of the box to the other edge of the box? Yeah, so Josh is keeping the heading of Argus consistent and I'm, yeah, I'm just going back and forth. And by the box for people at home, we mean the Argus view on channel two. We see Hercules in the view. And we call that view the box, right, are we? Yeah. Because Argus is not changing heading. We can call this the reverse slalom. Yes. Like an Olympic sport. <laughs> <laughs> slalom, yeah. but uh, upslope. <laughs> <laughs> I like that a lot. And, and without posts. The posts Just make it up as you go. Yeah, see cucumber posts. <laughs> It's a little divot. What is this? Could be a burrow. Or some maybe a slump or depression. Go for zoom. Some sort of depression in the sediment. Go wide. Not sure if it's a collapsed burrow or yeah. Maybe a slump.
sedimented slope with uh, many small bioturbation mounds and switchbacks. Sea cucumber trails. All right, I've got an ROV question. Someone's wondering, how do you keep kind of the correct distance between Argus, Argus and Hercules so that you're not yanking too much on Hercules, but you're not getting too close? And how does that kind of balancing act work? It's sort of something that both pilots work together to do. Um, that is like the fundamental crux of <laughs> the system. Um, Argus can be raised and lowered via the winch, so that's one way we do it. And then Herc can be navigated sort of all the way around Argus. And so you really try and get Herc to a or get Argus to a position where Herc can look at the thing that science needs to look at, or sample the thing that science needs to sample, and then you raise and lower Argus and spin it around so you can see Herc and. Uh, you know, maintain a proper distance to keep the tether from fouling. Oh, can I come back to the left? Go for zoom. What a shell. What? That's a Nautilus shell. <gasps> Are you no serious? Way. Wow. Can we pick it up? Cool. What's that? Can we pick it up? Okay. It's probably wow. pretty fragile. Go wide. Bridge, yeah, you that? can totally see the, the swirl the of The tips that. are kind of interestingly dark. I wonder if they could be manganese coated. I'll stop, please, for sample collection. I don't think, uh, so we did some dives back in American Samoa back in 2019 in a Nautilus, uh, suspected Nautilus um, area. I think this might be a paper Nautilus shell. Uh, it's, it's doesn't quite Should this be a slurp sort of uh, set in a box thing? You can try that. Yeah, I think you could do just a just a grab. really low grip force. It's you're, it's you're probably going to be super right fragile. I know. Like it could. I was trying to not use too much thrust because it's so. What about a scoop? Oh, a scoop. Yeah, scoop could work. I I am I'm I'm going to wager that it's probably super fragile that it could tear so okay. you could decide which method you want to use uh josh do you have any uh suggestions uh, on my, which could, method to use you could scoop if it's steve thinks it's going to be that fragile yeah if it has any weight to it it'll probably tear um, okay so, so either, scoop and in the left-hand box, probably, right? Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah, that should work. What did we put in there? Uh, that Just has the sponge nodules. and some nodules and the white thing. This one. So. Oh, no, I was thinking about that. Oh, sorry, left-hand, my bad. I think that one, has, that one has more space. It does, yeah, it yeah. does have the cobble in there yeah. and the nodules, so. I think it should be okay. Yeah. 
we're going to have to put some more biology into the starboard box if uh, we start getting too loaded up in the front. Um, if we do take the scoop off, is it going to be able to go back on the front porch? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's on a magnet. A magnet thing. Okay. I remember they had some problems reattaching it last cruise. There we go. That will be easier to grab. I think these are animals that live up higher in the water column, and then when they die, their skeletons, shells, drift down to the bottom. So this is not something that's oh, from press. around this depth. Press the wrong button. Yeah, I was going to ask, because I feel like their maximum depth is maybe, what, even a thousand? Much, yeah, 2, much shallower. Yeah. And you think this is a paper nautilus, maybe? Never seen one alive. I'd love to see one. Oh, wow. That's really light. Gonna go in this forward box on the port side. Okay. Ready for a tool tray? Just a second. Okay. We uh. Um, want the tool tray? Oh yep, yeah, totally. I am that uh Is that just thruster wash, just taking it out? Uh, oh no, it's still in there. Nice. Yeah, I'm getting pretty close. To yeah, no, I'm here. just going to close this up. So and I'll, I'll close it up. You still the air. Okay. That sponge is okay still in there on the starboard side. I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't it. see it. I'm guessing You can it. stow that. Uh, yeah, I'll stow later. this later. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. 
Steve, did you say you saw it? I did not see it. I was looking for it. Okay. I wonder if it settled or if it got I think caught it settled. up somewhere. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm I, I agree that it probably settled. Nice collection. Yeah. Yeah, nice job, Gabby. It's exciting. Nautilus shell. Mm -hmm. So cool. Too bad about the zigzags. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's going to be a competition who can do the most uh, continuous zigzags without breaking for sampling. <laughs> I feel like nobody else is going to be interested in my zigzag <laughs> <laughs> thing. Oh, that's pretty Very common geometric practice. Path. Oh, yeah, I know it's common practice. I just, my obsessional identical zigzags are a little silly. I'll just do them on auto XY and you just make them oh, really? perfect. Oh yeah, basically every Herc pilot that's ever sat next to me is like, please zigzag more. Everybody loves a good zigzag. It's an endless stream of sediment coming from this small patch in our scoop. Yeah, it's really light. So fine. Josh, do you find it works if you have a little bit of a layback to actually move the ship back? I know you suggested that earlier, and I've thought about it, but I've never done it before. Uh, move the ship back? Yeah, it just depends how long that you think you're going to take to yeah. do the collection, how far back you're laid at the moment, like Argus is laid back. I mean, at these depths, right, it's, it's tough because every stop is going to mean another half an hour yeah um, right so if you can if you can make the collection really quick then you know you don't even sometimes you only have to stop the ship or yeah you stop briefly i'm i don't know like we could we should start moving the ship right because okay. we're caught up and then right and so i can stow while the ship oh, yeah. is moving totally. while the ship starts moving yeah are you in auto xy uh, yes, I was actually. Okay, oh. go for it. Uh, arm's getting a little twitchy there. Bridge, I probably stow this. Let's okay. go ahead and get underway. 100 meters, bearing 320. Thank you. Bump your camera out just a bit so you'll be able to see the. Uh, I you'll be think able to I can see, see the magnets oh, okay. a little better. One little bump. Nice. Are we going to have like a. Kind of worried about the sediment in there, just streaming up into the lens the whole time. Yes, but. you're absolutely right. That is exactly what's going to happen. Um, let's see how bad. Okay. You can always fix it if it's yeah. fucking us. That's a very good point. Uh, 
I'm gonna kill this for now though. Yeah, I should have emptied that out, like waggled it out. It wouldn't have been hard at the time. I don't see it yet, so maybe it's not a issue. Yeah. It seems like there might be some terrain ahead. Oh, hey, yeah. buddy. I'm sort of conflicted about stopping the ship because I like keeping the layback down just in case there is like an intricate sample to do. Yeah. And also, I'm not a fast sampler yet. Well, pretty tough. I mean, at 3,000 meters, you can't not lay back. Right. And that wasn't a half hour stop there. Argus no. is not moving. That was fast. So oh, oh, you mean half hour? Yeah, until By we get started we again. By the time we get actually like making ground again, it's going to okay. be well. And doesn't. Yeah. How long does it take Kate again right now to get Ooh. Argus to start a, like Yeah, definitely over to five, six minutes. Okay. Six so if it's like seven, yeah. I don't know how long that sample took, maybe seven minutes or five minutes or something. A stop takes five, a start takes five. Yeah. Um, probably twenty minutes. Maybe a little more. Depending on layback. Um, after the sample where we reversed, um, I started, I wouldn't even say pause, but I let us run out the move completely before calling another one okay. in. Okay. With the attempts to keep the layback smaller, which I think worked. This isn't looking much more like different rock type here. Not so much this kind of muddy stuff we've been seeing consolidated. This looks like boulders and cobbles amalgamated together with crust. Yeah, we so can see the difference on the sonar too. And with high pack, like we're about to come up and then we'll level out. So we're like on the steeper part of that rise we've been doing. Yeah. Got about 150 meters vertical until our next rock sample. So I That's good to think know. Uh, it actually might be in the vicinity, maybe a little bit past waypoint three. We'll see how this goes. Are we still at 10 meter contours on high pack? Um, these are now 50 meters. 50. So okay. So yeah. More like right here. Couple right? more contours up. Yeah. Probably be on the next watch. We'll see. we make it there it'll probably be right about that time so it actually could be really really nice to hand over during that time oh feeding feeding traces oh, uh, those cool. black air patches could be feeding traces for some of those limpets we saw earlier on previous dives This is it, huh? This is what we've been looking for all watch. I know, I feel this is what we expected. <laughs> so different, so quickly. Wow.
Remember when we saw that rock that had tumbled? Yeah. I wonder if it was from up here. All the way up here. <laughs> this is pretty solid stuff. I mean, it's possible. Fish. Even the limpets are feeding on the kind of the areas that are on top of the what's a good word for it? Um, the parts that stick out from the slope. I'm guessing they have maybe more nutritious food on them wow. than the more flat parts of the Is that a coral? Slope. Look at the patterns in the rock over yeah. here. Uh, where are you looking? There might be just to the right of the lasers. They're down a bit. Might be a coral. Oh yeah, I see. Go for zoom. I don't see it yet. Sparse Bottom. branching. Oh, yeah. Like a, yeah. I see, I see it. it. That one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Tiny little guy. It is. It's probably a primnoid or a bamboo. I really want to illuminate this giant like pattern in the rock here that you can see in Argus. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Gorgeous. That's incredible. Wow. Oh, too bad. That was too short. That was short. Maybe there's more. Maybe. <laughs> that doesn't look good. I don't see it yet. <laughs> Not in Argus yet. Go back down and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Could do. Replay. I don't know if I want to see it again yeah. that much. We're never going to make it to waypoint three. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks for keeping us honest, Navigator. Okay, I'm rushing. This is such a coral light dive, or watch, I should say. I just want to see some 
lots of corals. You know, um, last night after, like pretty much as soon as we left, they started seeing like explosion of things. I was looking through the captures of it. It was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Because we set them up right to the, the summit, essentially. It's the way. That free summit. Oh, like, yeah. That was super nice of us. That we're, was <laughs> we're the nicest watch. Just <laughs> setting people up. You don't take credit for anything. <laughs> Actually, I feel like four to eight is the nicest watch. They've had a lot of blue water. That's very true. They've been setting everyone up. But yeah, it was really incredible colors and diversity. Just oh, that's awesome. Beautiful. And nothing if not humble about how many peaks we get in a dive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I was we had a bunch of um classroom interactions right after our dive when we set them up. So we got to show a ton of students. Oh, that's that. awesome. Um was really neat. I cannot stay up past 4 a.m. Yeah. That's just not even <laughs> a possibility for me. A, very, a lot of strong opinions about sleeping before the 12 to 4 or sleeping after the 12 to 4. I don't know very many people who sleep, who don't sleep after it at all. Yeah. Steve, uh, Science Steve, you're one of the few, right? I, I I'm usually up. I'm Steve. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I know, he doesn't sleep. Well, can we go back to the left? Uh huh. I am gonna look at this coral and not answer that question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, go for zoom. Oh wow, the wow. polyps are really big. Yeah. I think so. This one actually uh, looks like. It's a bamboo coral, and it might be in the genus Bathy Bathygorgia, which is one of the deeper bamboo coral species. It's totally unbranched, but has these big, thick, fleshy polyps. You can zoom again, video. And uh, there's been some work done recently on this genus in this area off Hawaii, so I think imagery should be sufficient to help get a um, better ID on this critter. But you can also see some of the sclerites in the body wall that look like these small shards of white. And those are providing structure to the polyp in addition to the, um, the gelatinous part of the organism. Okay, go ahead. Great, thank you. <laughs> I sleep both before and after watch. <laughs> But I don't get like a full like it's both of them are like four hour sleeps. They're weird. Or three three before and like four after or something. It's not ideal. Yeah. After about three days of not getting a solid six to eight hours, I start to feel it I I can't do the, the napping. Yeah. You need that, that deep REM cycle once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. <laughs> I'd say every night. I mean, <laughs> once in a while. I'm pretty good at sleeping from like 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. Is that what you do? Yep. Okay. That's pretty much what I do, too. That's not a full night's sleep. No, and then I do a hour or two in the afternoon. Yeah, okay. like an evening nap. Okay. After dinner nap. In my normal life, I like tend to go to sleep at like nine o'clock at night, and so I really want to like do that before before watch sleep, and it's Bridge, really yeah. painful to get up. <laughs> One hundred meters bearing two three two zero. <sighs> my isosceles style has been totally. Dismembered. <laughs> Nothing left of the legs of those triangles. Um, if you want, I can pull it into flater mouse later, and then you can really see it <laughs> <laughs> up the slope. Oh yeah, Dan would be so proud. 
He is always talking about, what do you call it, like wag, wagging your tail. You're going to have to name that method. Oh, the, the, the isosceles tail wag? Is that it? I, I mean, I don't know. D Josh it says he does it with autos, though, so he's probably even more isosceles than me. Oh, yeah. That's well, cheating. It depends on, the, depends on how steep it is. <laughs> if it's, like, flat, then yeah, I'll just auto XY it. Are, are you not using autos on this? Uh, uh No. Oh, nice. This, this terrain, you'd probably, yeah, you'd hand fly it, but I like to zigzag, especially, I mean, if you're going point two, point three. 3,000 yeah. meters, you've got lots of time to look around. <laughs> Could call oh, it I can the put it in the sit rep folder, just screenshot. <laughs> 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 Excellent. Yes. Uh, I was thinking you, you could call it the Pythagorean method and just say you're a practitioner of the Pyth Pythagorean <laughs> method. Yeah, 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 that sounds great. Can I get a spelling? <laughs> <laughs> People think you're P -Y. a super, <laughs> super smart mathematician. How about the Pelagathian? Pelagatherian method. <laughs> so funny. Only even vaguely interesting at 4 a.m. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, stand by. Just wants to adjust his heading really quick. One what's, three zero. What's he, what's he at right now? One two zero. This means he's going to be going more backwards, but yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, we're not Sorry. having trouble making moves, so, but I can't imagine it hurting anything. What'd you say, Josh? It should make it easier for him, probably, but just going to be backing down on the cable, but I think it'll be fine. We're going slow. Bridge, Nav. Go ahead with the heading change. Thanks for calling down and checking. I'm excited to see that Nautilus shell. Yeah, me too. Awesome. I've always wanted to see a Nautilus in the wild. What's this debris here? Is the white debris? Can we zoom on that? Go for zoom. Is it another shell? Could be. Broken up. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yeah, totally. Yep. Same, same. Huh. Okay, go wide. We, we found the... Paper Nautilus spawning grounds. Have you seen a Nautilus in the wild? Have Are they a thing that people see? Um, or are they more like colossal squid? You can see them. I think um, when uh, when Falcor was doing some work with Sebastian around Australia, I think they saw some in the wild um, on the eastern side of Australia uh, during their Great Barrier Reef expeditions. Oh, cool. We've tried, yeah. Like, like I was telling you, we dove those uh, sites uh, outside of American Samoa, where um, they had they had known or had seen previously Nautilus, but there was not one seen, as far as I could tell. They're they're midwater, right? They're not benthic. They 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 can be found within you know a few meters of the bottom. Okay. Yeah. I don't know much about, you know, they're, they're shallower species. I don't know much about their biology. They're cephalopods, right? Yep. Yeah, same with the um, the paper nautilus uh, is in the genus Argonauta. So an Argonaut. It's a 
which actually referenced in, in the book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Uh, they, yeah, there were some really cool observations. Uh, Nautilus shells, you know, they, they're persistent. When they sink to the bottom, um, they'll often get covered with sediment, but, you know, they can also provide substrate for things like corals and sponges to attach to if they're solidified and not, not moving uh, for a while. Some pretty great imagery of that on the internet. I want to make uh, an, it abundantly clear for the next watch about the um, condition of the forward bio box and floaties. Yeah, yeah, we collected some delicate samples. I, I, I don't think it means we can't put more stuff in there. We'll just have to be more careful. Yeah, I think the stuff that's in there really does want to sink. It's okay, um, yeah. To the this time, this uh, most recent time, the starboard box came up uh, at a really nice temperature, but the forward box was a little warm. Oh, okay. You can take a look at those gaskets. Mm -hmm. Seen a lot of these divots with the dark centers. Yeah. You can zoom on them. I think they might be just. Patches where you have organic material deposition accumulation. Go for a zoom. What are we zooming on? Uh, the, just the divots, I guess. Um, Is that what you were referring to, Steve? No, I was seeing bigger divots, but... I'm, oh, okay. I'm, yeah. <laughs> Not sure what we're... Just anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, st Science Steve was talking about the like organic matter that had just fallen down. It was accumulating in the divots. Yeah, at least... Little cloudy, fluffy bits. Right. Xenophia fours. Actually, good to see the seafloor once in a while. You can pick out a bunch of things you don't typically see higher up. Xenophia fours being among them. Sometimes they just look like clouds of sediment, but um, you can actually right. see structures when you zoom in. I think uh, yeah, the Argus shot actually gives you a better idea of kind of the oh, yeah. heterogeneity of the sea floor. You know how pockmarked it could be. Do we have any zoom function on Argus? We do. Yeah. Do you want to zoom? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it just to see if we can make out any larger scale patterns on the seafloor sediments are really nice sure. to do that okay i can if i come up a little bit i'll illuminate more actually i'm three and a half meters up never mind i'm at a good altitude do you want to just try to uh get forward so we can zoom yeah sure uh, light pole? can you go wide yep sorry all right it's all i was good. looking at the, at the argus yeah okay is that okay. good that's great oh you just want it centered so you can zoom yeah okay. going for zoom Yeah, it, it looks really uniform kind of when you're looking through the 
Park Zeus, but um, when you look at it through the camera higher up, you can see how patchy some of the things are. It's not even clear if all these burrows are still occupied. A lot of these small patches of white sediment are what's called bioturbation, uh, things that live in the sediment, taking sediment out and piling it up near their burrow. Some some of the infauna could be filter okay. feeders, you know, pumping water through their burrow. Some might be deposit feeders, scraping food off the surface of the sediment. But there, there's tons and tons and tons and tons, tons of life in the seafloor sediments. Um, but we just don't have the tools to really assess that with this vehicle. What would those tools be like? Um, you could use push cores, right? That, yeah. That's one thing you could use. Uh, that'll give you some you know, replicate samples of you know, the stratigraphy of the sediment. Um, but more, more than likely, um, if you were doing large-scale benthic sampling, you'd probably want to use like a box core or a multi-core, which is usually deployed from a ship, and it gives okay. you a lot more um, reproducibility and replicate uh, power. Okay. And a box core gives you a larger sample of sediment. Can you do a box core at this kind of depth? Uh, could you? I don't know. I don't know what the limitations on the instruments are. I'm guessing you could. Um, I mean, it's just a bunch of like Rube Goldberg springs and trap mouse yeah. traps at the end of a very long wire. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. The sauna had a crazy massive grabbing device with a camera in the middle. Which is this? The sauna. It's like a German research vessel. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know it. I'm. I mean, there's Actually, definitely there's like a, big coring ships as well. Yeah, they would they would go and grab. Well, it was it was wild. It was huge. It was like the size of Herc. Oh wow! Yeah. Just a mat. They would just grab a massive the sediment. The, that yeah, was they'd run a camera up the wire too, and then they could sort of like go over top of stuff. And mm. it oh was wow! A little bit. I don't know. A little bit destructive, I think. Sometimes, depending what they were going after. Yeah. Yeah, it, it depends on what you're trying to sample for. If you're going for myofauna and macrofauna, maybe a push core might work. But if you're going for larger macrofauna, you might want to use a box core because you're going to be able to get those things like worms before they escape okay. deeper um, or uh, outside of the you know, your core area. There is kind of a larger box core that Huey developed that. Uh, I've talked to Matt Hines a bit about that Jason's used, but I have never used one on the ROV. Oh, the, so it's much smaller, on obviously. The, on the ROV. Yeah, obviously much smaller, but you can do kind of a, a bigger patch. Right. Kind of a little trap door kind of comes. Right. But you get also more payload if you're through frame lift. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to worry so much. I was talking to Beth, the microbe scientist oh, the, yeah. on the last cruise, and she estimated, she told me a million microbes per teaspoon or tablespoon oh, of really? sediment. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. What? yeah. That's amazing. And she was the one, I think, who told me that there's fungus in the ocean, too. Yeah, fish on the left. Oh yeah, yeah. Th no, there there are.